radio mechanic here and today I'm going to talk briefly about headsets headsets for ham radio uh, you've probably noticed in all the old mo war movies the radio operator always had his headset on and there's a very important reason for that having headset on blocks out background noise increases comprehension and intelligibility like tenfold it's incredible what a difference a good set of headphones make uh, you've if you listen to ham radio at all on high frequency bands it's very noisy there's a lot of background static that gets tiring after a while a good set of headphones acts like an audio filter a lot of that seems to disappear and stuff that's not intelligible voices that you can't understand through that with a set of headphones seems to jump up out of the noise and suddenly you're understanding very clearly what someone's saying I also hate desk microphones these things are always in the way you try to have a notepad here no matter which side you, there, there's just clutter on the table when they're you when you have those out so I prefer having a microphone that's above the table now this happens to be a high ICM and I cannot say enough about Heil microphones. I've had so many compliments on the audio from this. In fact, I had one fellow in England ask me if I'd stick around long enough to, uh, for him to go wake his wife up, who was also a ham. He wanted hear, her to hear the audio quality of this microphone so he could convince her that he should buy one. And in fact, I had a conversation with Bob Heil on the air a couple of years ago. He's a ham. And... Uh, I gave him a call, you know, gave my call, and, and uh, he came back, and he said, it sounds like you're using product, and sure enough, I was using his Heil microphone. I mean, he picked out the audio characteristics immediately. He could tell I was operating one of his mics. Anyway, that's a side note. Because I don't like microphones on the table, and I wanted a set of headphones and the mic off the table, I went down to the ro local ham radio store, ham radio outlet, and I bought one of the Heil headsets. Now I bought one of the good ones. I bought one of the professional series with the boom microphone built in because I knew that the Heil microphone was going to be a good quality mic. Brought them home, unboxed them, put them on my head and knew immediately that they were going back to the store. I couldn't stand them. The problem was they had a very stiff earpiece and not only was it stiff, it didn't fit around the ear. These fit around the ear. These are bows. It didn't fit around the ear. It sat on top of the ear. That causes a couple of problems. One, it doesn't have any passive noise canceling. The sound can still leak in around your ear. Two, it's extremely uncomfortable to have something pressing or pinning your ears to your head. And I wear glasses, which means it's going to push my ear against the frame of my glasses and cause a lot of discomfort. And I also suffer from migraines. Even wearing a baseball cap can give me a headache on some days. But these were like a vice. They were literally like a vice on my head. And they were just excruciatingly uncomfortable. So I tried bending the band out and releasing the tension. The problem is it was also a very heavy headset. So once the tension was off of them, as soon as I tipped my head down, they fell on the table. They wouldn't stay on my head. Absolutely useless. And interestingly, I was discussing this a couple of days later with a couple of uh, the hams on the local repeater on the drive into work. And they both said, oh, no, I'm getting the Heil headset. They're good quality, and, you know, I know I'm going to be happy with them. And about a week later, I heard them both discussing how they wished they had brought them back to the store because after an hour or two on their head, they were excruciatingly painful. Now, I'm not knocking Bob Heil's product. I love his microphones. And there may be people out there who can stand that kind of pressure on their ears, but I think most of us would find something pressing against your ear uncomfortable. Fellow at work, I was discussing that uh, very problem with him. He used to work for the Bose company. So he knew I was on my uh, getting ready for a trip to Thailand. I often flew to Southeast Asia uh, for business. And he knew I was going to be flying to Southeast Asia. At best, if you flew out of New York and took a flight directly to Bangkok, it's 18 hours on an airplane. 
Uh, I'd be in a straight jacket after that period of time. So I used to fly from here in New Hampshire. I'd fly to Chicago, from Chicago to Narita, Japan, and then from Narita, Japan into Bangkok. That way I could get off the airplane every 10 or 12 hours and walk around, get the circulation back. It used to take about 22 hours, 24 hours between their door to door, but I got to get off the airplane occasionally. Anyway, he said, take my Bose noise-canceling headset and try them on the flight. You know, let me see if you like them. So I took his noise-canceling set, and they were extremely comfortable. And the active noise-canceling worked very well on the aircraft for blocking out all of the plane noise. You get that roar of the jet engine and the sound of the, you know, you can hear the air flowing over the fuselage. It's quite annoying and tiring. But with that Bose headset on, all of that disappeared. Absolutely disappeared. I did notice, however, though, that when the uh, flight crew broke in to make an announcement or if there was any static or the jack was a little loose on the, on the armrest of the plane, if any crackling seemed to be greatly enhanced by the circuitry in the noise-canceling headset. And, you know, it, it was okay to live with. I mean, the sound quality was good. It was enjoyable listening to the movie. And, uh, you know, the occasional noise burst didn't bother me too much. It wasn't very frequent. But when I got home, I tried them on the ham radio. I plugged them into the ham radio here and expected to, you know, be just stunned at how well they worked. They were awful. Uh, the digital circuitry that's in the noise-canceling system could not deal with this noise. That impulse type noise just drove the circuitry crazy. It amplified it tenfold. There was this horrendous roar and nothing was, uh, nothing was intelligible. It distorted all the voice. I couldn't hear anything. I was absolutely disappointed. So I took them back to the guy the next day, and I said, you know, thanks for the, letting me have them on the flight. They worked out beautifully. I said, but, you know, they're no good for my ham radio, but I do appreciate the loan. And he said, well, here, I have something else for you. And he handed me these. These were brand new in the box. He'd never used them. One of the perks that working at Bose, he had all kinds of headsets laying around the house. And these are the TP1A, what they call triport. They are just passive headphones. There's no electronic active circuitry in them whatsoever. They're feather light. And they have the most wonderful compliant uh, earpiece. It is just absolutely like deer skin. It is just soft, compliant. They fit around your ear. They fit completely, let your ear goes completely inside, and they press gently against the side of your face and block off probably 80% of the background, ambient background noise in the room. Not to mention they're so compliant, even wearing my glasses after a very short period of time, the um, frame of your glasses just melts into the side of these things. They they just conform right around it. You can't even tell they're on your head. I have worn these for four and five hours at a time and totally forgotten they were on my head. I get up and start to walk away and don't realize I'm tethered. They are that comfortable. There was, however, one problem. As they came out of the box, the frequency response was too broad. It made intelligible, intelligibility slightly worse uh, over a, a normal headset because they are so broadbanded audio-wise. However, I discovered there's two ports here on the side and a port here. They call these tri-port headsets and they're, they are there to taper the audio response or, or modify the audio response and allow them to work like a large bass reflex speaker. And they had way too much bass response. I discovered by accident that if I put my finger <clears throat> over these holes, all of a sudden the low frequency response was rolled off. And by covering all three holes, the audio intelligibility of these things skyrocketed. They were just perfect at that point. I popped them open. I took some silicone rubber and blocked the ports off internally. Just put a little dab of silicone rubber over each port and put them back together. 
And they are what I would call today the perfect ham radio headset. The audio response is perfect for voice. They're comfortable for hours and hours and hours of operation. And between this and the microphone, and I'm going to move the camera up here slightly, I have the headset routed with the microphone cable on the boom so that when I bring the boom to the operating position where it's near my mouth and I put the headset on, whoops, sorry about banging the camera, I now have a completely clear work surface. There's nothing in front of me other than my notepad and my pencil. I can have my mouse over here if I want to use it because the computer's off to the right hand side to control everything for my logging. I use a foot switch for transmitting. Uh, it operates the transmitter. And when I'm finished, I can park the headset on top of the boom mic. Now this is a Heil boom with a Heil microphone. I have the spring mount. Absolutely love it. I am happier with this microphone arrangement and this headset arrangement than I have ever been with anything before. I have hours long comfort with this headset and get all kinds of unsolicited audio reports. Again, these are the TP-1 Bose Triport and I don't even know if they make this model anymore. Extremely, extremely comfortable. I suggest you go down to your local Best Buy or wherever you're buying your headsets from. Try them on. Put them on your head. See if they fit around your ears and wear them for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Make sure they're comfortable. The modification for these for the audio response is extremely simple. Little dab of silicone rubber and they are utterly perfect. And again, Bob Heil, I, I apologize. I love your microphones, but I find nothing ingratiating about the headset. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it electrically. It works fine. It's just uncomfortable for my ears and my head. Okay, we'll try to keep this short. I hope you found that somewhat informative. Everybody, of course, has their own opinion on headsets. That's mine. See you next time.